Hello, everyone. Welcome to another session of Regen Civics. Last week, we are talking about doing the project assessment and selection. So the last week, we've actually been going in there and selecting our projects. And I think we found our 12. So with less there's further ado, so we could start this off seeing if there's any critical questions. Did anyone have any problems voting? Was there anything broken? Or does everyone feel like their voice was able to be represented? That's what I'd first love to cover. Because if not, let's correct that. And then we can see who the 12 projects are. So I'll pause now if anyone had any issues or questions or anything related to the, the selection process. Um, so I'm not quite through my voting, but I am working on it and I'm making steady progress. Um, the, there weren't all, like with, with all the projects, there weren't always um, links available to, to look and, and find out more about the project. So, so I've been doing some of my own searching to see if I could find other information, but um, uh, so, so how much more time do we have to finish our voting? Uh, 24 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, bye. <laughs> no. Um, okay. I'll keep working on it. <laughs> um, that's if we were all intent on closing it today, which was our agreement last week. So we can keep this momentum flowing forward. And I think that's the case, um, that we aren't going to want to keep dragging this out. So, um, I would say if there is no information available, then that's also a criteria that we're missing. Um, this right. was the first season. It was a little disorganized. So the people who showed up the most, I think, is a really strong signal that they're going to continue participating in this right. um, and be really key for the first season anyway. Um, All right, so, that's fair. That's yeah. fair. Um, Don, I love because you've come into this just recently because I just I forgot to you know keep you involved the last six months. So I love <laughs> the questions and continuing to ground this. And I, and I do understand why I'm the only one asking them. <laughs> um, anyone else have any questions, thoughts, anything they want to bring about the process? Easy. Well, then let me go over it and we can see what it looks like. Uh, if you do have anything, just feel free to unmute yourself while I'm pulling this up. Where's the drum roll? <laughs> Ta da! <laughs> well, I'm giving a couple more moments for Don to be able to vote anyway. So, or anyone else who's on here that hasn't finished their votes, or if you want to verify them. Um, one thing I did notice, and this brings up the importance of actually having a blockchain. Um, or at least using a different database, is people could change the votes of other people. So I don't know if anyone knew that. Um, so I would definitely recommend you go and look at yours just real quick if you're here and just make sure that your votes weren't changed and they're saying what you thought you wanted them to say. Um, I don't think anyone would have done it intentionally, but you could have accidentally clicked and actually shifted someone else's votes uh, when you look at the results. So if you haven't been here yet, please Come here, add your name, and then you can quickly get in your votes. But I believe we've already done that. Um, so let's go down. So this is the first thing again. This is this the projects and alliances, the representatives. Move that on. So this was the scoring criteria. And here's my votes. Let's not look at those right now. Let's come down to the results. Um, Don, did you finish your voting? <laughs> Almost, okay. <laughs> Um, well, we'll let that fill out. I doubt it would even change these anyhow. Um, but let's look through where the current 12 stand. And what we can do, and we can decide this on this call too, if we want to give like two more hours before we officially call it um, for people to be able to fill out their last bits and make any adjustments necessary before I send out an email saying these are the 12. But it's unlikely that the 12 will change because a lot of votes have already come in. Um, so who we have at number one is Liminal Village. Number two was Tabby Regenerativo, or the Hacienda Tabby Living Lab. Number three was Umbundancia and Ubuntu. Awesome. Number four was Starseed Eco Village. Number five, La Tierra. Number six, at Finca Sagrada. Number seven with the Knicks. Number eight with TDF, Traditional Dream Factory. Number nine, Salt Cross Garden Village. 10, Heartland Collective. 11, Tioga. And 12, Lala Gardens. 
with a very close 13 of Valhalla Farms. And this was actually 12, um, literally right before this call. So things are switching up a little bit. Um, so that would be the, the 12 right now that we would be going with this season. Um, I didn't do that with a lot of fanfare because I don't know if it needs to have it. <laughs> so, so I'll pause here again in case there's any thoughts, reflections, or anything on the process, what we've come to, um, if anyone finds this completely broken, or any feedback on what we've done here so far. I put a question in the chat just wanting to clarify that everybody's you know, sort of playing by the same rules. So if there's, you know, for example, with Finca Sagrada, there's, you know, six, seven of us in this community that are sitting in on the calls, only one of us voted. And just want to make sure that everybody else is playing by same rules. You can verify if everyone's playing by the same rules by actually coming in here and seeing, because you're only able to vote if you're seen as a representative. So you can actually see who was able to vote, who they were representing, what projects um, and what alliances that actually came in here and did this. And Got we can it. see not a whole lot of people who are even part of projects that were selected or the alliances actually came in and voted. So not everyone was wanting to even be part of this selection process, which is fine. Not everyone needs to be. And it's not really a lot of people's passion to come in here and pick and they were happy with what we picked. So um, for those who did decide to come in here and participate in this, they were the ones that were able to drive it. And you can see who everyone was by coming here and looking at the list of people. So I've done, I have checked this out and it didn't look like there's any duplicates and you weren't able to vote for your own. So if your face was on this, you weren't able to vote for it anyway. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Oh, do you see the results again? Can you please show that? Um, it was the, the view has changed. So we want to fix it and I don't know how to do it, but mm. it was hidden so that you couldn't actually see the results normally. So you just saw the averages for the projects to get an idea. Um, Roberto actually fixes, but if you write, if you click here at the left and you enter full screen, oops, that's not it. Hold on, learning tools here. Oh, lost it. There we go. So what you got to do is you got to click on it and then expand it. And then it actually shows you the projects. Oh, thank you. So we did this because we wanted to hide it until delivery day, but I didn't know how to program it back. So, so you got to see the averages, but if you click through here, then you get to see the top 12 projects. You get to see who voted for them and how many points they voted for. Um, and then if you go to the bottom, you can actually see if there's any comments or if the project left anything, you can see the activity down here and you can add a comment if you wanted. Um, and we might expand out using this tool, um, but this is also what we're using the DAO for going forward is so we can have things on chain so things can't get changed by other people. Um, there's an immutable history of who's voting for what. So we just make it a little bit you know, more secure that way. Um, so we're just using this tool in the meantime. And then you just click across down here and you can see all 49 projects and alliances. Um, and you can see who the top 12 are. Okay, any other questions, thoughts, feedback, comments? Well, I just want to appreciate all your effort uh, here, Raiki, in, in helping materialize this and manifest it into this world, which so badly needs this kind of grassroots effort and building from the bottom up. Um, uh, it's a lot of work, I know, and you got a lot going on in your personal life, so I just want to... Uh, I know you don't need to have this, but I'm just giving it to you anyway. Thank you. Um, I'm definitely doing this for selfish reasons because I want to live in these villages very much. Yeah. So I appreciate you all for building them. So, you know, <laughs> I'm here to help weave as much as possible. Um, thank you. Any other questions about the process or the results and what we came to? Easy, awesome. So we have our 12. Now what I can do is I'm gonna go over just a quick timeline of what next steps and what looking forward actually could look like. Um, and what I'll do is this recording will go out and I can quickly check with you all today if it's okay if we give 
five hours or some period of time for people to be able to formalize it. And then we'll send out an email saying, this is the actual 12. Um, or are people happy with it right here? So this is our, you know, another choke point. We constantly have to be, you know, writing our rules because we're learning as we're going. So a thumbs up says, let's wait another, you know, six hours later today, be able to have this recording, send it out and get people a chance to come in and vote if for whatever reason they weren't able to. Or use the heart if you're saying, nope, we have our 12, let's end it here like we agreed to last week and let's move forward. So just heart, thumbs up, use the little emoji and participate in voting. Um, I'm seeing mostly hearts. So in our loose consensus and how we're running with today, that's what we're running with. So we've picked our 12, the current 12 as they stand is what they are. Awesome. Cool. So what does next steps actually look like? Let me bring up a little PowerPoint slide. I went over this really brief last week, but I'll give another brief overview, talk high level, and then go into the details. So the very first next step is we're going to take those 12 projects and you have an opportunity again to remake your video for the final. Uh, I would highly suggest, um, a lot of them are great, it's up to you. If you wanna change yours around, speak a little bit more towards you know, what success looks like, you know, why people might want to join you, because this video is gonna go around and be used for our crowd, crowdfunding slash crowdpooling and let people know who your project is and this is when they can know to contribute to you. So if you're running a, a festival later this year, it might behoove you to mention that and say, hey, you know, we're running a festival where you can actually show up on the ground and participate in planting gardens or building houses or whatever. So you might include that in your five minute video. Um, so either way, if you want to go with your current video, just let me know if you want time to be able to make a new video, great. Um, we're putting the video together within the next one or two weeks maximum. And then we can start circulating and socializing who the 12 projects are and getting people familiar with them. Um, maybe I could pause after each one of these steps in case there's any feedback questions, thoughts or anything on each one of them. So if you have it, I can't see your hand, just unmute yourself and speak up. Could you um, just briefly, well, I think you're going to be doing this as you go through the steps, but give us a little context about who's going to be seeing these 12 and then, um, you know, you'd mentioned the crowdfunding. Um, yeah, just, just to put the remaking the video in context a little bit of that, if you would, please. Yes, definitely. Thank you. And I'm going to add some stuff to it as well to speak more about the Alliance and other people um, have offered to be able to do this too. So one, this video is going to talk what the Alliance is doing. So the very big picture, hey, we're building new civilizations here. We're building new social systems. We're exploring all these new possibilities. Let's decline that call. Um, and here's 12 different possibilities that we're exploring right now. And then we'll talk about the 12 and then we'll close saying, and you get to participate in this and we're doing our crowd pooling later in the year. And that's what the crowd pooling means. Crowd pooling again, meaning you can show up with any form of capital, which could be your time. You could have equipment. You could be an old couple that has land and just, I don't know why it has to be an old couple, but whatever, you can have land and you want it to come to one of these projects and you can contribute land. So that's what a crowd pooling is. And we speak to a little bit about that. So this is when we're sharing that, hey, we're launching these projects. You can contribute to the regenerative renaissance. This is what it looks like. Who's going to see this video? Whoever we share it with. So we were all talking about doing our own crowdfunding and try to run for our own projects. Now we can have one video we could all share, all 12 projects and all the alliances, talking about what's going on here and get a little bit more traction behind you know, one story. And that'll be the same with the crowd pooling campaign. It's when we socialize that, they show up, they have one link where they go to and they see all 12 projects. Later, I'm talking about this, all 12 projects of each season would also be represented by one token. So if people don't want to participate in one particular project, they can say, I love this idea in general, I want to support all of it. And that's where they invest into the alliance directly. And then part of the alliance's role is then distributing those funds to projects or alliance members. So we support the whole ecosystem that way. Um, so that's kind of what we're building here. Does that make sense? Pause for any reflections, thoughts. Whatever. That clarifies it a lot in my mind. Thank you. Great. 
Um, so that would be the immediate next step for all the projects to do and consider. If you're already done with that, the step after that, uh, we're going to be setting up our decentralized organizations. Now, I'm going to be helping groups do it with Haifa and potentially potentially another um, tool set, but you can use any DAO, any token, it's up to you. Um, as an alliance, we're decentralized database agnostic. You know, any regenerative ecosystem needs to have a whole suite of tools we're using. So if one ecosystem fails, it's more of a nuisance rather than a catastrophe. Um, so that's why our alliance ethos is to not, you know, be dogmatic about one particular tool set, but we're gonna be setting these up. So the next step we're gonna do as uh, an alliance and as an incubator, is we're gonna dream up what our future economic systems look like. Because before we can design an economy around them, we need to know what we're designing an economy for. So the very first step here is to have five or maybe three um, future visions of a person operating in your economic system. So five different contributors in the future, what does an average day for them actually look like? So we wanna design the most ideal average days and clear as detail as possible from five different perspectives or three of what does your future village project look like and what is participating in it look like in the future? You know, okay, some absurd uh, examples, you know, we wouldn't design uh, a play to earn ecosystem where people are spending a lot of time on their phones unless when you designed your future scenario, people were spending a lot of their day on their phone, you know? So we want to design our future economies and then design our economic systems to support that future rather than, you know, accidentally happening into something. Um, so that would be our first thing to do together is to co-dream that, have a session where we all come together and share our future perspectives so we can learn from each other and maybe you know, enhance our perspective of what a more beautiful world might look like. And then we'll go about designing our tokens to support that and designing our roles and designing our DAOs and designing our you know, economic systems. I'll pause there because I was huge and it sounded like someone might have been talking to someone else. But anyway, if you want to yeah. speak, just unmute yourself and go. I have a quick question on that just to expand on what you just said. Do you visualize this as a verbal a description or do we actually uh, do like a little short white paper on our description of what a day looks like in our uh, region, Equal Village, and we describe it in enough detail that we can share with other Eco villages, which is what I would like, but I don't know what you picture here. Um, that's entirely up to any project. What we're again trying to do with this alliance is make the best use of our time. Um, so everything serves multiple functions. So if you're doing this for the alliance, it's going to serve you anyway. Because why are people joining your project? You know, what we've noticed. Well, you know, I've noticed this. You know, Web three had they were going about something completely ridiculous. Imagine if you went on an incredible vacation to a foreign country. You absolutely loved it there. You wanted to move there. You came back home, and then you just started, you know, describing this place by talking about how their financial system runs and how they store information in a database. People wouldn't care at all about you know going to that country. So instead, you know, explain to people why they want to be part of this project help you understand why you're part of it. You know, what, you know, what inspires you to show up every day and contribute to this vision? Like, what is that vision? Let's get really clear with that vision. So then when people join your project, people have a shared vision. That's what's so important about all of these different projects is that we're doing a diversity so that we're not saying one vision is the right vision. However, each, you know, diverse project needs to have a really clear vision. Otherwise, people don't know why they're going to show up to that project. And there's going to be a lot of conflict down the road if you have competing visions for that community. So it's really vital for the catalysts of these projects to get really clear on you know, what, this, what the vision for their organization and project is. And that's what we're doing here. Um, and we're doing it by teleporting ourselves to the future and saying, this is what that more beautiful world that we want to live in, that we want to raise our families in. This is what it looks like. This is what an average day looks like. And it has to be pragmatic and practical. You know, an average day isn't the day where you do nothing and you contribute nothing to society. That's not gonna be a successful economy, right? So you've got to bake into it, how are people's needs met within an average day, you know? So it does take a little bit of process. And this is what we're gonna be doing in the first step is designing sustainable economic systems that could be viable alternatives to our current economic and political systems, right? Um, Cool. So that is a whole lot. So that would be the first step in this process because we can't yeah. design anything else if we don't know what we're designing for. A quick question. Um, like Finkelsegrada, we have 
five or six people involved. So uh, if we were having a, a Zoom call, um, they would like right now I'm I'm sort of the representative. So it's all right if we have two or three people on the call, like we have some younger people who would probably be uh, easier for them to follow all this. Um, that, that'll be all right, the makeup of e each individual project. Yeah, definitely. And how you do this, you know, maybe it's a video where three of you show up and you share different perspectives of the future and why you've shown up to the project. Um, maybe you write it out and you have some stories. Um, Walter, what I suggest for Finca Sagrada, what I would love to see is connect with the Kogi. They have a very clear vision of what society could look like, and that might be inspiring what you guys are doing. Weave a vision in with them. Um, that could be a really beautiful thing to happen. <laughs> so that's kind of what I'm talking yeah. about is we're, we're creating realities here. What is that reality that we're creating? You know, again, why do people want to join you? You know, what are we designing for? Because that's where we also got lost in our, you know, designing decentralized economic and coordination tools, blah, blah, blah. We kind of got lost because we started designing tools for the sake of designing tools rather than designing the tools that we needed to create a particular future and to serve a particular need. Um, so this is what we're trying to do to reground that entire process. So this is grounding it. What are we doing? What are we building towards? What is the purpose? And the purpose of these villages is to provide a different quality of life for people. Okay, when we say a different quality of life, that's going to be a million ways of it being different. How is your project different? So, for example, in the one that I love, you know, my morning is going to start off with me going outside and, you know, checking on my plants and how they go. So in order for that to work, we're going to have to have an economic system that's really close to the food system. You know, a social system that lives right next to food. So that's what we'll start designing from. And then my day, you know, unfolds. But I'm not going to try to share my day because I'd love for it to be, you know, not biased towards anything. Um, cool. Pausing again. If there's any thoughts, questions, reflections. Stephen. Yeah, so, so that reminds me of the Findhorn community where they, they had a very specific day in the life. And that Findhorn community is now, I don't know, 30, 35 years old or whatever. But the first thing they did is they got up in the morning, all of them, and they made a circle around their garden. And the garden was the metaphor for the health of their community. And so they ended up growing these tremendous large sized vegetables that responded to the love of the community. And when the community wasn't healthy, the vegetables weren't growing so well. And it's like an amazing kind of a, uh, a connection between the vegetables and the health of the community, which is kind of cool. But this also ties in very, very nicely, this Regen Civics uh, 12 uh, Eco Villages ties in very, very nicely to the new Seeds Tokenomics, which is gonna be rolling out shortly, uh, and which starts with creating value at the Eco Village level. So it's all, to me, it's all of one fabric. It's all coming together in a, a beautiful whole uh, fabric. So I love it. Um, yeah, absolutely. And to ground this a little bit more, let me help by providing some more color. Um, if your future involved you having to do no bureaucracy at all, like that's not something that consisted in your day, meaning when you went through your day in the life of the future village, there's no moment where the community actually came together to make group decisions together. So if you don't see that in your future, that's not part of the future we're building, we wouldn't design the social and coordination system to require collective intelligence, meaning when it require people to come together and vote, meaning we might have to build different tools for coordinating that, which this is happening in Web3, where if you do an action that's automatically counted and you don't even have to think about it. So maybe that's the route you start going as a community or you go a different route entirely. You know, in your future, if you do have a moment where you guys are coming together and you're doing group process to make collective decisions together, then great, then we can start building that into that future as well. So that's what I'm talking about. Let's design the features we want and then use the tools that are gonna help us get there, not just fall into tools that design a future that we don't necessarily want. So I just really wanna make that importantly clear because I feel like that's also where, just saying this again, where Web3 got a little bit lost is we started off saying, this is new paradigm technology. We can build new paradigms, but we kept building those tools from the old paradigm to serve old paradigm interests. So it just kind of one step forward and didn't really change anything. 
So that's kind of what I'm inviting in this, you know, acceleration right now in this process for us to go through and actually reverse engineer the futures that we want. And that was the, the main prompt with making that video too, is what start off in 2030 or whatever that future is for you and say, this is a day in the life of us being successful. This is what we're building. This is what we're working towards. If you join our project, this is what you can expect. If we succeed, this is what your life could be like, you know, and then let's get really practical about making that, which is what this alliance is about doing. So I feel like I've said it like 12 different ways. So let me know if anyone finds any, you know, misunderstanding, or if we even find that this is the most important step to start, if someone else feels like this is maybe speaking. I think it, I, I believe it is. I think it's a really good way to start. I think that everybody's aiming to create a world that is centered on human thriving. And I think trying to envision what a day in the life is, is probably a really good way to do that. It's a, it's a good forcing mechanism for, for what that looks like. Um, is, is the, the primary communication mechanism for this creation of a video is that is that what we're recommending as 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 the projects should should do they should create a video about what the day in the um, life should be or is there other ways that they might communicate that i think one way of folding it together is to make it the same as your project introduction video because you can have them weave together so if you say this is a day in the life, this is what you could expect by joining the project. You're answering both of those questions at the same time, kind of. Um, so that's what I would suggest for doing that, you know, presentation of your project video is weeding all of that in. So you might have three different perspectives of this is what a day in the life looks like now, and this is what a day in the life looks like future. And then now could also be speaking to who you actually need to join you. So if you need someone to come and actually plant gardens, say, hey, look, a day in the life is you coming here and earning a share of this village and being able to earn your housing, et cetera, by coming and planting permaculture gardens and connecting with food all day, if that's what you're into. You know, so you can be very practical like that, or you could be a little bit more um, abstract in how you describe it. Um, but I would say that would be the best way to stack functions, build it into one video where you describe all of that. Um, that could be really powerful, um, or really, however you're inspired to present this information, it's entirely up to each project to decide. Um, unless, yeah, anyone else has anything to add to that? Alexandra, do you have something? Yeah, I was just going to add that it's, it's pretty much getting like a little view not only for people that want to live in your community, but also people that want to invest in your community as well, because, right, you're going to use all this potential um, content to be able to get funds as well. So think on, on, thinking on that level as well. That's a really good point to remember there's multiple stakeholders that are going to be viewing this video. And I say stakeholders over shareholders, that distinction is minor, but super important. But anyway, um, so when you're making this, if you're too utopic and it's not grounded to how people's needs are actually being met, then people are going to look at that and say, hey, they're too ungrounded. If it's too, quote, grounded and it's only focused on the economics, then people are going to look at it and say, this isn't utopic enough. You know, I don't want to be a part of this. This sounds like exactly what we're dealing with today. Um, and funny enough, we've had both of those comments on the videos that we shared already. Is people commented on them being like, you know, these things aren't game changing enough. They're all talking about making a service and having a product and their financial returns, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's too broken. So some people are going to think that. So anyway. It's really important that this vision is as grounded as possible and remembering the multiple stakeholders that you care about. Um, and I guess there's one way of doing that, which is actually what Lucian's helping with in helping people actually transport themselves to a future. So there's a meditation process that you can do. Uh, I highly recommend this, which is all about clearing your mind, setting a really powerful intention to teleport yourself there and then completely emptying yourself. Don't try to project what you think you want, clear out and then teleport yourself to that future. Literally imagine yourself waking up in your bed in the future. And what does a day in the life look like? Walk through it yourself and do that a few times and exercise that muscle. And it gets clearer and clearer each time we've done this in groups and it's really powerful because then the group will end and everyone will share their perspective. And there's all these things that everyone saw in common, which was really cool. Um, so I could actually encourage that, that you get your core team together and you do that group, you know, teleport yourself to the future process and see what that community looks like. And then we can reverse engineer from that inspired place. 
So I'd also encourage to not try to, you know, be too heady about this. Um, anyway, there's a lot there. Robert, you have your hand up. Um, but you're muted. Sorry, you're referring to mental time traveling. So that's great. It's a wonderful exercise. And uh, it also reminds me of, of the, of the backcasting process, you know, stepping into the future, working your way back to see what you need to organize. I'm sorry we came in later, guys. Uh, I think we missed the start of the thread. We were in a different Zoom link and uh, with Roberto and Laura and also Jesus and John were there and I don't see them here. So maybe we should try to get them in anyhow. So we're more complete. And uh, yeah, just picked up on the, on the second part that you were saying about the second video. So I think it sounds good to me. I just sent the link in the Discord um, in case anyone was missing it. Um, all right, so that's what I'm suggesting is the next step for this alliance. As we come together, we dream up our future. Well, first step, let's make that video, which could be part of the second step because that could be weaved into one. So making one coherent video about why do people wanna join your project? What do you actually need? And what does success actually look like? What does that future that we're creating look like? So we bought all into one step and then we'll design our organizations after that. So that'll be the step two and a half is then literally setting up our organization. So I can show you a little bit um, because Regen Civics just set up theirs. Well, let's see here. All right, so every organization, if they're using the Hypo tool set, will have something like this. Um, if they're using another tool set, they might have something similar. But when you show up, it's a blank slate, like you see here. There's no archetypes, there's no badges, there's no contributions or assignments or anything. It's just an empty organization. So this is how each one of our projects could start. And then we're gonna go through the process of creating those archetypes. So if you're dreaming up your future and in your future you have food forests everywhere and all the food is meant for the community by the community, then some of the first roles you're gonna need, some of the first archetypes you need are those food producers, the people who are out there planting the gardens. So one of your first roles might be a permaculture steward. Okay, so maybe you're also in your future where the community is doing their own healing. So maybe you actually need people who are doing you know, healing and healthcare. So you might create roles for that. You know, maybe your community is really focused on running a retreat and you have that gift that you're bringing to the world. So you need people who are gonna run that, whatever. So now we're gonna actually create all the roles that your community needs for that future scenario. This could be existing people who are already part of your project, but also the people that you need to be part of your project for it to succeed. So that when we do that crowd pooling, we're coming here and they're looking at your organization, they get to click on all the archetypes and see you know, what you need as a project. So I can give you an example and go to one that's not empty. I can go to Haifa. So you can see this organization and let's come down and see its archetypes. So you'd be able to click here and see all the different roles that are available in the organization. Um, we've been experimenting a lot. So we have a ton of roles and it's maybe a little bit overwhelming um, because we've tried a bunch of different things. But anyway, so this is what it would look like for each group is they would be able to have their own organization set up. Um, I will pause here in case there's any thoughts, reflections, or questions about this. A quick okay. question. Second. Is, uh, um, is it possible to see others' organization roles, as in, like, uh, can you? automatically fill up like the default roles or um, yeah, see what other organization import these kind of roles. Yeah, if you come here, you can look at other organizations. Um, I don't know why I stopped sharing, but I just did. Um, let me bring it back up. Yeah, so you can come here and see other organizations and get inspired. We literally just launched this. So a lot of organizations are brand new and Haifa has a ton, so less inspired. Um, we are building templates, and this is what the first season is really going to be about doing, 
is setting up our organizations and we have a, quite a diversity of them already. And we'll go through that process of doing roles. It's gonna be a little slower for us because we're paving the path. Um, but every season behind us is actually gonna look at previous organizations and be able to get inspired by them. So we're starting with a blank template, which is why we're starting from dreaming up the future because we're coming at this from a, we don't know, we don't even have a best practices. Um, that's a lie because you can look at intentional communities and eco villages and mimic their best practices, which is what one of the templates we're providing is doing. Um, however, we wanna create new templates too and not bias anything. So for the sake of this exercise and for season one, I think let's not look at any templates and try to approach this from a clean slate to see what we can come up with. Um, my opinion, but again, this is entirely up to you. If you want to find some templates online and copy that, you know, there's a lot um, out there. Um, also for a little bit of, in, no, I'll pause here on that. Did that answer your question slash does anyone else have any other questions? All right, so that's when we'll actually come and set up our DAOs. So after we've dreamed up what we want, we're gonna go and reverse engineer that by building out our structure. Um, I'll speak to a couple other process or tools that we have here. Um, so we have those archetypes, those are roles. So if you're an organization that says, hey, we have these people doing stuff, this is where that can exist. Badges are also something you can make. Um, so for example, you can have, and this is a very typical one, you might have a, a journeyman, an expert, and a novice badge. So when people are filling a role, then they can also hold a badge that's giving them a bonus um, or a reduction based off of their skill level. So if you're a community that cares about that sort of thing and cares about badges and recognizing people showing up in different ways, you can design those badges. If you wanna give certain powers. So say your community is building on, you know, they've launched this, their project on Haifa, but they're also selling NFTs on Ethereum and they have an Ethereum wallet that's holding all of their money and Ether and stuff. Well, then you can have a badge that says, we're gonna empower these people to be able to have access to that bank account, to the Ethereum bank account. And this is a badge system that we've set up where it's saying, hey, in order for you to have access to these you know, treasury assets, you need to be holding this badge and that gives you access. So you can control asset, access to other you know, ecosystems and other Anyway, I can get into badges forever and we can do that on the, the breakout session that's really focused on helping people design their organizations. And then the other thing, it says generic contributions, but these things are gonna be quests. So this is the last thing that you can imagine as your organization is what quests, what are generic ways that anyone can show up and contribute to your project? So maybe you're a local food system project and you have garden days. So your generic quest might be show up on Saturday at two o'clock and you can earn a hundred of our tokens every Saturday you show up or whatever, that could be a standing quest. Or you might have a standing quest to you know, write an article about what we're doing or help us come up with a role or whatever. Whatever ways that people can contribute openly to your organization, you can start designing them as quests. So that's the three main things we're gonna work through designing our organizations. So that when we come to that crowd pooling, people get to show up and be like, great, you know, I absolutely love Regen Civics because that's the one I'm looking at. You know, what roles do they have available? Let me take a look at that. How can I contribute openly? And let me take a look at that, you know? And this is gonna be able to help other people know how they can contribute. Yep, <laughs> pausing there, that was a lot again. Any questions? There's a few questions on the chat. Great job, Reiki. Thank you so much. Uh, quick question regarding um, DAOs versus DHO. I've heard it described before as a DAO is autonomous and a DHO has the human coded at the center of the organization. I would just love to hear your perspective on what is the difference and uh, do we have to choose between either of the two or, or what, is, what does that mean? That's probably going to get pedantic. Uh, both of those terms mean whatever people think they mean. Um, so it's weird. But anyway, my pedantic description is a DAO is autonomous, meaning it doesn't require necessarily a group of humans coming together to do anything. So Bitcoin, for example, coordinates energy consumption, and it doesn't require any group of humans constantly being there, you know, making a decision to move it forward. So Bitcoin, that's where the DAO term actually came from, was trying to describe what Bitcoin is. It's decentralized, it's autonomous, it's organizing something. And what this you know, decentralized autonomous thing was organizing is energy consumption at a large scale. 
doesn't require any centralized body doing anything to make that happen. And it was a huge success. It's consuming a ton of electricity. You know, you can look at that as a successful day, right? What we said is we're not trying to automate things because in the beginning of the Dow days, it's like, oh, what would be cool is a Dow with a self-driving car, of, you know, fleet of cars that paid for their own maintenance and filled themselves up and paid back investors and required no humans. You can, you know, automated taxi fleets. Um, so that's where we actually came up with the H. We said, let's not try to create a world where we're automating the human out of the equation. Let's put the human at the center of it and try to build tools to help empower human coordination. Uh, but nowadays, DAOs are taking on that flavor anyway, and people are just saying, you know, a DAO is a landscape for designing a new organization. So whatever. It's kind of lost its meaning, and I think that's fine. So it doesn't matter what term you use. At the end of the day, all we're doing here is designing new, and maybe not even new. We might just be redesigning old social systems that have existed for millennia and kind of been hidden. That's another one of the templates we're working on is actually taking a bunch of indigenous social systems that have worked for them because we look at indigenous systems and act like they're not complex, but we forget that some social systems have actually gone through the process of empire building. They collapsed because they realized the failure of that and then built really intricate social systems that prevented the concentration of wealth and power. So exactly what we're learning right now with capitalism, we're realizing that power concentrates, we need to build systems that intentionally distribute that power out. Um, and the, the Onondaga uh, nation, which is one of the Native Americans. That's a weird way of calling them anyway. But anyway, the Onondaga Nation created a system like that and it worked really well, um, but they didn't create a system that you know, immunized them against the white man's disease. So unfortunately, a lot of them died and we forget about their culture, but we can relearn from those systems too. So anyway, long story short, we're building new, we might be rebuilding old, but at the end of the day, the Dow Do tool set is about redesigning how we coordinate to meet our needs. And we get to do that, and we're doing that right now. Anyway. Well said. Thank you. I, I just wanted to add, Reiki, I think it's really important that people understand there's not a right answer here. <laughs> there are a lot of wrong answers, but there's not a right answer. This isn't like a test. This is really, it's a test of our creativity to do this. I don't think we've, we've really lost um, the sensibility for building systems that aren't hierarchical. Um, and so I think it's gonna take a lot of experimentation for, for us to get it right. So that, I think that for me is one of the most exciting aspects of this is that we do get to reinvent and re-envision what social systems could be. Um, and it's not about, you know, it's not about nailing it first time out. It's about figuring out what the meaningful experimentations are. And if there is a right answer, the right answer is diversity. That's what creates resiliency in any ecosystem is that diversity. Um, why people reject the one world order thing is because no one wants to be living under someone else's vision of what the future should look like. So that's why we're creating infinite number of projects is because if none of them call to your heart and that's not a community that's right for you, then that's a signal that you can create another one. And there's probably a group of people that align to that diversity that you're seeing as well. So that's kind of the ecosystem we're creating here is we're saying, here's a diversity of village-based projects and communities. Maybe one's right for you. If not, let's create another one and let's create building that diversity. And then we're kind of aligning with evolution where we're creating more diversity and more resiliency over time um, rather than less, which is what our current cultures are driving us towards. Um, so that's kind of the right answer. The right answer is diversity, is experimentation, is learning. Because then as we learn as an ecosystem and we see other projects that are doing stuff we love, this is when we're gonna start building templates to help the people who come after us after we've learned what works. So right now we're still in that experimentation, like let's test some things out phase because we're still in that new space. Um, my opinions, but I'm just trying to hold space and kind of cohere thoughts here. Um, any other thoughts on this step before we keep going? Okay, then we'll keep going. If any thoughts become or come up, feel free to share them in the Discord and we can discuss them. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and set up our DAOs and do's. Then in tangent with that, because these conversations are already happening, but immediately after that is when we have to decide our legal structure. 
So, you know, what legal container are you using in order to formalize this structure that we just designed? So maybe it's a land trust, maybe it's a nonprofit, maybe it's a spiritual ministry, whatever. So this is when you actually decide as a project what that's going to be. Um, and then we'll have a session where we all share what our project is going to be, and that's what the session will be about. Then after that, then we're ready. We've designed our organization. We know what resources we need. We know what we're building towards. The legal structure is designed. Now we're gonna go through the crowd pulling and then we're gonna announce it to the world that, hey, you can invest in the change you wanna see. Um, and that's when the crowd pulling will take place. Then right after we crowd pulled, we pulled all our resources together. We had a whole bunch of people sign up that they're gonna be part of our you know, Regen Civics Festival in the fall or whenever you decide it's going to be, that's when we're actually gonna have those. So bring people together and build value on your particular project. That's kind of the end of the season. So we end the season with people being on the ground, actually being in the projects, getting stuff done. So that's kind of the end of the accelerator. And then that's when you as a project, you join the Regen Village Index, you become part of the season one cohort where you guys can keep meeting, you know, working together, learning from each other, et cetera. Um, and groups can continue to invest into all 12 of those villages or one of the villages at a time. So that can continue to add that, you know, value to what we're doing here. Um, and then again, we have that alliance where you guys have a share of that alliance. The alliance has a share of every project. So we have this shared container for us to keep building and putting value into. And then of course, you know, launching 12 projects every new season. So then we just co-learn and co-create. And of course, this is what we're all here to do is build those thriving worlds we want to be living and growing up in. So that's kind of next steps. I'll pause here and see if there's any steps that people feel are missing, if we feel like this is going to be valuable or just any general feedback on what we look like going forward. Uh, Stephen. Yeah, I just want to say that one of the opportunities here is also to for the eco villages to share learnings, experiences, knowings uh, between themselves and to grow as a resource between themselves and the network and share things with each other that work and don't work and what they discover. Um, one of the things that Finca Sagrada was already planning, not knowing the outcome of all this, is we were already planning a festival in the spring, next spring. So this timing is going to fit right in well with what Finca Sagrada is doing. And of course, we would like to invite people to uh, from the other eco villages down to Vilcabamba and in, in Ecuador, and be our, you know, our, you know, participate with us, and and we certainly would like to know about anybody else setting up a festival, and maybe we could participate in theirs. Anyway, just wanted to throw that out there. And of course, Sam of Rebuild has been launching all sorts of festivals. Uh, so he's been helping do this and I definitely connect with him. If you're a project and you aren't planning on running a festival already, highly recommend connecting with Sam. Um, I'm also connecting with uh, the Gitcoin community and Cello community. And both of them wanna run a festival at a regenerative project as well. So we'll be selecting one of the 12 to do that with and whatever 12 projects want. So if you're one of those projects and you aren't planning a pro uh, festival yourself and you would love to host one of these other communities, just reach out to me, say so in the Discord, et cetera. Uh, but I do think that is a key part of this is having a physical on the ground gathering where we activate the community. Uh, I'll pause for a moment in case Sam wanted to say anything to this. Sorry, and Sid, there's so many alliances, I feel bad, oh. which is why I choose not to mention projects by name because I'm gonna forget. <laughs> so Permitors as well. Anyway, back to Sam. Yeah, thank you so much. And yes, thank you for putting this together. Uh, yeah, it's amazing to, to see all these regenerative villages actually coming to life. And I think we're all yeah, dreaming of seeing more action on the ground, so yeah. Um, yeah, just wanted to mention we are uh, hosting a brief by spring this weekend, and so we're to has your interest, um, like feel free to follow, and anyone can organize a brief by spring. Uh, so on those topics, uh, and very connected to that, we have rebuild, which is uh, organizing events for. People building regional villages. We hosted one in Costa Rica, 
uh, a month or two ago, and some of us here were there, including I think I saw Nicholas Biff and Kelly. So yeah, some uh, wonderful people around the world who are sharing the same ideas. And yeah, if you if you are interested in host. Uh, we're losing you, Sam. Yeah, we lost him. Is, is it just me or is he coming through for anyone else? That is... No, he, we lost him. We lost him, Reiki. Um, Sam, I, what you're sharing is incredibly valuable. If you don't mind typing it up and sharing it as an announcement in the Discord, then that would be fantastic. But you're going to keep coming through. Just, uh, yeah, talk to me. And yeah, we're going to be hosting one in Portugal in, uh, in the end of the summer. Uh, begin oh. Wow, that was like a 30 second delay. Uh, uh, that was pretty bad okay love you sam um we got parts of that if you could share as an announcement that would be fantastic um walter you guys have your hands up yeah i just wanted to say how uh, grateful i am to be part of this um there's this word here uh, you know in spanish chevre uh, like this is so neat i'm uh you know, in my 20s, I was in communities, different communities, and then I had my whole, most of my life, you know, having my own farm and stuff, and then coming down here and creating a community and uh, having uh, this opportunity to, you know, I feel it's like pretty cutting edge and sometimes a little overwhelming for me, but on the other hand, we, we're attracting really great people who can um carry this all forward so i'm so happy we have um a very strong team and uh i think the work we're doing is so important we're creating communities all around the world that will uh be able to survive into the future so i, I just wanted to say how, how grateful i am for all this oh yes um uh oh we have about 20 minutes left. I'm going to share a couple more announcements, but then I'd love to have the last 15 minutes with us just doing a checkout. And that's giving you a space to say whatever you want to say, any last minute or whatever. Yeah, whatever you want to say. And then we'll close out for the day. Um, so you can be thinking about that if you want. Uh, I'll share a link here real quick. If you are one of the 12 projects that was selected or you're an alliance organization who's going to be creating with us, um, then you can join the Regen Civics. Alliance organization, and which we'll start using formally to pick the projects going forward. Um, and how that looks is you'll get here, um, you'll have a place to log in, and how you log in is with your Seeds account. If you don't have one, reach out to me. And again, Regen Civics is going to be making DAO tooling on multiple ecosystems. So we're not just going to be doing it in IFA, we're going to be doing it in the other ecosystems we're operating with. Currently, that looks like uh, Celo, Ethereum, and Gnosis Chain, I believe. But we'll see what it actually you know, ends up being. So I just want to keep saying that. But anyway, uh, we're setting this one up right now. Um, and you can log in and then join the actual Region Civics Alliance. So let me log out, show you what it'll look like. You'll come here. It'll say, you know, register a new account or log in. If you already have a Seeds account, you can log in using it. So you can log in with Seeds right here, and then you can scan it with the wallet. If you don't have that, again, just say so in the Regen Civics Discord and someone will send you an invite, I'm sure. Um, cool, and then you apply to be a member. So once you sign in, actually I'll share with you what it looks like in another one that I'm not a part of. So when you come to another organization, um, let me log in. Sorry guys. Glory of Web3. Okay. 
So what it'll look like is right here where it'll tell you to welcome to Smart Trust, become a member right up here. So when you come to Region Civics, click on that become a member button, sign it with the wallet or whatever you need to sign it with. And then you could become part of Region Civics. And then again, Region Civics, what we're designing our economy for is supporting all the projects and alliance organizations. So we have a representative from each one that's then joining this separate DAO that can then raise funds for the whole ecosystem. And then the role of that organization is then deciding how to spend those funds. So we go and raise, you know, a million dollars because people are like, yep, we love everything that's happening here. We raise that money and then we decide how that money flows through all the projects and organizations. So that's being set up right now. Um, so that's all the announcements I have and we'll take it on to the next step. So the very next thing and the next gathering we'll have, we'll start designing the DAOs and start answering questions about that. So start thinking that up right now and we'll start getting into the nitty gritty details of making that happen. Um, that's everything I have. So now what we can do is we can go through a round table and anyone can check out if you want to. Um, and if you have to leave right now, please raise your hand right now. So you can go out first, um, and then choose to go later. If you can stay on a little bit longer. Um, maybe just, I just have the, thank you first. Thank you all for all this. I'm so excited. Um, and thank you, Reiki. I wanted to ask if you can share the next steps with us here. So we have uh, the slides. Thank you so much. Yes, I am sharing them right now with you. Um, the Discord as well, so we don't lose it here in the chat. Yes, I will add that to the Discord along with all the links that I shared here today. Um, great, so now let's start our checkout round. Maybe we'll send it back over to Roberto, um, Lauren, Jillian, and you guys can say anything you wanna say and then pass it to the next speaker. If you don't have much to say, just Pass it on. Well, we missed the beginning of the call and you may also miss that Jillian is now in Italy. So hello uh, from this side of the Atlantic. Um, we've been straight into design here. It's been pretty rich. I think Cedric is unmuted. Um, we missed the first 20 minutes, so we don't even know what happened, <laughs> uh, but that was a, a whirlwind and uh, didn't know there was going to be quite so much structure. So I'm both excited and a little bit like, oh, oh, I need to learn the pattern language of, of what's going on here. I think we've had a lot of deep conversations just even today, reviewing our assessment of everybody and, and really wanting to look at the pattern language of all the different expressions and honor the people in their various constellations that have shown up, the ones that made it to the point of having a video and not, and just uh, really how do we move forward positively and in a co-creative group. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited, even though I don't really know what's going on. So. I myself are pretty excited to see the tooling. I think that uh, idea with the, with the roles, the archetype, the badges, I think mm -hmm. it's uh, setting up a, a very interesting a tool set for the communities to see, find each other, see and see who can actually be there. So very, very happy about all that work you already uh, done over there. And I'm excited to start to use this, uh, the tooling. And uh, yeah, uh, I'm not sure um, what happened with the voting, if uh, it is now the time to actually, uh, or if it was already revealed who was up there. So maybe you can get an update uh, um, maybe I'll reveal it again because people were voting during this call, but we did yeah. make a decision to have a finalization for this call. So let me do that now. And this will be the final standing. So you updated it so we can actually see it a little bit clearer. So this is nice. So here's the top 12. So if you're part of this top 12, you're in the first season. So we have Lala Gardens, Liminal Village, Tabby Regenerativo, Starseed Eco Village, Abundancia, La Tierra, Star Cross Garden, Finca Sagrada, The Nix, Traditional Dream Factory, Heartland Collective, and Tioga. They made it into the top 12. Um, and we could see uh, there was a pretty big swing because La La Gardens went from 12 at the beginning of this call to number one. So a lot of support for La La Gardens here. <laughs> um, anyway, any questions, thoughts, comments on this? If you get your vote in literally in the next 10 minutes and it changes anything, then we'll announce this one more time, but otherwise this is the standing. I'll just share that I'm, in, I'm part of uh, Finca Sagrada and I have done uh, 40 major uh, 
consciousness networks over the past years. So I will be happy to uh, gather my thoughts about uh, what's been most successful with that and share it with the group uh, before our next meeting. <laughs> Incredible Thanks. decades and decades of wisdom with this couple right here and organizing <laughs> regenerative groups. So it's no, no, no. <laughs> Colin, how I see it. Um, all right, so let's keep going around in a circle and checking out. Um, Walter, did you have anything else you wanted to share before we move on from your screen? No, that, that was my checkout, yeah. I think there is a bug with the, with the coda with Lala Gardens. If you open it up, there is someone, I don't know what's happening there, you can see it. Um, all right, let's look, I'll look into that right after this call. Um, and if anyone else sees any bugs or any faults with how this worked, please bring that up. Um, and let's get to the bottom of it. If that skewed the voting, then I'll make an announcement and we'll clarify. Um, thanks, Nadine. Um, Nicholas. Well, I was trying to scan the code to try to register and it gave me an error. Um, I'm trying to download the, the desktop version. It's, I don't know if that's just me or you might have a bug somewhere. Um, yeah, any troubleshooting for Haifa in the... Um, the Discord, you can go to the Haifa channel and you can go and leave your comments there and I can help anyone that's having issues there. Cool. Sydney, go for it. Hello, beautiful humans. I am so excited about what we're doing in this world together. So delicious and so aligned with my purpose. And I'm really stoked about hopefully serving as an alliance organization on a couple different fronts. Of course, Permatours was mentioned to support with festivals and recruitment. And then also several individuals on this call and in Seeds and in Permatours have been working on a platform to support projects with fundraising with NFTs. And we have the first draft of the website and platform and we have Christina's Microbe Heroes NFTs on there. So you guys can check them out for inspiration. And I'm going to post in uh, the Discord about it so you can check it out and plug in. But I'm just like thrilled for the opportunity to work with you all. And thank you for the magic that you're all bringing. Much love. Uh, Stephen, thanks, Sydney. Yeah, I just put my hand up because I have to leave pretty quickly too. But I, I, a couple of things. I just want to say that for those of you who don't know it, Sid is a professional um uh festival uh, uh, organizer she she did it for a living that was her job before she even came to seeds and she's excellent at it so she's a wonderful resource uh, i just want to say that and loved working with her went up to her permatours project kickoff for the season two it was it was great i got little bug bites all over me but other than that uh i'm, I'm fine um i also i'm going to be in lisbon june 30th through July 3rd, if anybody wants to reach out to me to tell me how to get out to your community in, in Portugal, well, I'd like to try to do that. And finally, I do want to take you up on your suggestion, Reiki. I think Kogi are very tied deeply into Finca Sagrada, including dedicating a portal to Mother Earth there and, and the spirit house. And it's like very, very central core to who that place is living in the moment and in, into the future. And they come and honor that on a regular basis. So uh, I think you you got a good idea there. And uh, I'll pass this on to, um, let's see, who hasn't, who hasn't gone yet? Uh, Tina. Um, way to put a girl through the roller coaster there. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm curious about the glitch, but I'm, I'm just so happy to be here. I, th I know we're all going to benefit from, from each other going through this process. We're all going to be disseminating, and I'm just really excited to see us do some work that's going to make it into the history books, y'all. We're going to go into history with this because we literally are going to be giving people templates and the things that they need to just make it a lot easier process than the kind of things that we've been going through. So deeply appreciative and I'm deeply honored to be here amongst every single one of you. Um, let's see, Nadim, have you gone yet? 
No, thank you so much, dear sister Tina. It's so beautiful to see you here. Thank you so much. And thank you all. I'm so excited um, to support in any way. And yeah, as mentioned, um, let's let's make it uh, public and easy for um, our big communities to support. Right. So there are so many people that would love to help so many volunteers, but they need kind of a nice interview interface where they can pick up some pick some quests. Right. So there are a lot of people who would love to support us. Yeah. Thank you so much. I pass to. Um, well, Joe and Kelly have their hand up and then. Oh, yeah. And then we'll go from there. Let's go to Joe. Thank you, brother. <laughs> Thanks, brother. Yeah, I just had a question about uh, my ho our homework assignment. You know, I want to get clear on what the action items are following this call. You mentioned creating a video. Is that something we have to have done by the next call? Um, or is that... Uh, um, the timeline that? I put in and definitely call it out in the Discord if this is unreasonable, but two weeks. So two weeks to design a new video if that's what you want to do. Um, if all 12 projects come back and once all 12 are in, we're done. So that takes less than two weeks, great. Um, so that's what I would suggest is if you're part of that 12, let me know what video to use. Um, and then we'll have two weeks to make another video if you want to make a different one. Cool. All right. That's July 7th for those who are looking at calendars. Next meeting, July 7th. Okay. Yeah. July? Yeah. Um, oh, June, probably. All right, June 7th. Okay. <laughs> um, that's my birthday. Ah. <laughs> Yay. Any questions on that or any other suggestions on moving forward with the video? Shorter time, longer time? I wanna, well, so I heard that next steps are, so we're saying improve the existing video if you choose, but you don't have to. And then for the next step, the communication form, I think Dawn was asking that question earlier, could be video, could be a white paper, could be a deck. It doesn't necessarily have to be video. Is that what I heard? It doesn't have to be, and it doesn't have to be anything other than you knowing it, because that's what's going to design your organization. So Thanks. I'm saying to do that, you can weave it into the video because it's helpful for other people to know. So it's highly recommended anyhow. Um, but it's just you need to know that and be connected with that story in order to design your organization, which is the next step. Great. Thank you. Um, any other questions on that? Cool, then we'll go to Tucker. Thank you guys. Um, I am so excited to be going down this journey with you all. I feel like um, the projects that have been putting in the work uh, have been selected and yeah, I'm just really excited, really grateful for this opportunity. And um, yeah, let's build something beautiful together guys. Thank you, that's all I have to say. Thank you, Tucker. Ooh, um, and this is what we see in the chat. I see it popping up that there's maybe some discrepancies with our assessment tool. Again, just I think it's a nice point that this is why we're building these tools is so that we have things that are discrepancy proof. Um, but either way, we will go and look at it and find out what's going on. Um, but from what I think it won't matter because Lala Gardens was 12, which means it was part of the selection anyway before I got those thousand random points. But anyway, let me look at it and we'll dive in and make sure that it's correct. Um, we have a couple more minutes left, two more. Does anyone else want to share? Put your hand up if you'd like. Easy. Um, Brandon. Hey everyone, um, this is absolutely beautiful to see the whole process of these projects. Uh, I've been really putting a lot of emphasis on helping evaluate these projects and to see all these beautiful international projects popping up all over the place. Um, it's amazing. So uh, I think a beautiful top 12 projects and uh, excited to take these next steps and getting these uh, Stirring the pot. Um, I've also just found out recently, I'm gonna be having a child in the next coming months. Um, found out it's gonna be a little boy, so it's gonna be absolutely amazing to literally build this and this type of uh, amazing space. So it really gives a, a bright future when the rest of the world's kind of chaotic. Uh, we kind of keep focusing on what's important. So love you guys and uh, amazing, amazing round and, and voting and getting the projects in. Thank you. Ooh, well, a beautiful way to close this because 
you know, as we're dreaming up our futures, maybe it's nice to remember we're building the foundations for those new generations, because the reality is, is we're all born and tortured in the current systems, and we're not going to be able to see as clear as, as our new children can, uh, the realities that are possible. So that's kind of what the first step is here is we're opening up that sandbox of potential. So the next generations, you know, and that's why we will be in the history books is this was that turning point. This is when humanity said, nope, we're done with that old story. We're building a new one and we're providing the foundations for plurality of new stories to emerge. Um, and that's what we're experiencing here. And that's what we're exploring with the 12 projects. Y'all are incredible. Y'all are amazing. Um, that ends the hour and 15 minutes we schedule for this. So we'll bring this to an end and I will see you all next week and in the Discord. Thanks guys. See you next time. Thank you. Feel free to unmute yourself and make random noises if that's what you want to do. <laughs> bye bye. Uh, Yay. Thank you. No. Hey. Welcoming the babies in. Yay. Uh, <laughs> talking about my next generation. <laughs> Speaking of which, I'm going to go cuddle my son now. So love you all. Okay. Great job. Thanks. Let's do